you made a list of the top 10 players in the NFL, who would make your list? How many quarterbacks? How many defensive players? Who would be number one? Would you pre pre be prepared for the scrutiny you'd receive? Well, Pete Prisco did it. In fact, he did more than 10. He did 100. It's available at CBSSports.com. Here is Pete's top 10. And when you look at what he did, three of the top four quarterbacks, the two guys in the Super Bowl last year, Mahomes and Brady, and the MVP of the league, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Donald, the number one defensive player and one of three defensive guys in the top 10. And the only non-quarterback or non-defensive players, how about Travis Kelsey at five and Devontae Adams at seven? And here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, one of my absolute favorites, Pete Prisco. All right, let's start with the criteria, right? I, I mean, how much did you factor in how valuable they are to the team? I mean, look, quarterbacks are more valuable than offensive guards, but if a guy is clearly the best guard, does he go higher than any quarterback? How, how, what's the criteria here? Yeah, there's no doubt. If you went by position value, you'd probably have a top 10 of all quarterbacks. And, and so as much as this league is driven by the quarterback position, I tried to stay away from that a little bit. I mean, I had five in the top 10. But there are a lot of guys that play their position as well as others do. And Aaron Donald being first and foremost. He's the number one defensive player in the league. He also happens to be the number two player on my list. Travis Kelsey, who had a phenomenal season last year at tight end, is number five on the list because they play their position the way I look at it, as well as those other guys, particularly the quarterbacks, play theirs, which is why they're ranked in the top five. Who was the single hardest player to slot? Where you went back and forth, look, I don't know, maybe he's 20, maybe he's 80. I don't know, I mean, you had to you put him in different spots at different times before ultimately settling wherever you did on that player. You know, EK, it really wasn't one player, but it was a lot of the injured players. And, and I'll give you a couple examples. Christian McCaffrey was a top 10 player on my list last year, but I couldn't put him there coming off uh, the injury plague season of a year ago, so I kind of dropped him down a little bit. Nick Bosa, another one. He would be probably in the top 10 conversation as well if he had played last year an entire season and been healthy. Uh, you know, Saquon Barkley down at 57. He probably is a higher, you know, number than that if he's healthy. So those are some of the guys. Derwin James is another one. He's down in the 90s, and I, I think if he can play an entire season, he could be in the top 25 players in this league and probably the number one overall safety when healthy. So I really had a tough time with some of the injured players. Look, these lists are thankless, right? Nobody gets you and goes, Great job, Pete. I totally agree with all 100 of yours. The only mail you get, the only tweets you get, the only calls or whatever it is that you get is, what are you doing? What about this? What, about that? what position or, you know, what particular guy in slot do you think will draw the most ire? Well, since it's already started to happen, it's Baker Mayfield <laughs> not being in the top 100. And, and, and the Cleveland Brown fans are coming at me from all angles. And, look, I had him in the top 100 a couple different times, and I moved them out. I moved other guys up. Uh, I moved them back in. Then I moved them down. I have a lot of quarterbacks in, in this top 100. And people will say, why do you have Joe Burrow ahead of uh, Baker Mayfield? Because I think – when you look at it, what Joe Burrow did to start the season last year before he tore his ACL, he was playing at a high level. Might have earned him the offensive rookie of the year ahead of Justin Herbert. Uh, Baker Mayfield had a good season, but I think he's more of a product of the offense right now, the way they run the football. They want to run it, play action, hit those shots down the field. That's not a knock on him. But can he stand back there and throw the ball all over the place and win it with his right arm? I don't think he's asked to do it, which is why I have him outside the top 100. Look, you have Joe Burrow as the last quarterback in the top 100. If you said to me right now, for the next three years, I can have Joe Burrow or Baker Mayfield, I want Joe Burrow. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I, look, I love the great people of Cleveland. I go on radio shows there. But I, you can't argue to me that you think Baker Mayfield right now is a more ascending and better player than what Joe Burrow could be. I would take Burrow, so I'm not going to argue with you on that. Who's the guy that you think will make the biggest jump? Now you got to, I'm even going to make you look, do next year's list right now. Who's the guy in the top 100 who will go the farthest up this time next year who's going to have a great year? I'll give you a couple guys. I'll, I'll give you Justin Jefferson for the Vikings. I think he's got a chance to be a top 10 to 15 player next year. Uh, and then put this list together and talking to wide receiver coaches and personnel guys 
They all kept saying how special he is as a player. And when you watch his tape, you can clearly see it. So I think he has a chance to be top 10 to 15 next year. Chase Young will make a big leap forward this year. Obviously, in his second season, I think he's an elite pass rusher. He'll go uh, you know, up to 15, 14 sacks this season. He's going to make a big leap. And I'll give you a guy... At the end, at the bottom of the list, Legereus Sneed will be in the conversation as the best cornerback in the NFL after this season if he stays on the field. Um, I'll go with Trevor Lawrence will be on this list next year. All right? Now I can't put him I'll on give that. You that. Trevor Lawrence is going to be you. in this list next year, and I don't think he's going to be sneaking in at like 96. Like, I think he will be solidly in the list next year and obviously can't be this year. You and I are both on uh, Team Lawrence. Um, you have Devontae Adams as the number one wide receiver. You have Derrick Henry as the number one running back. I don't have any problem with Devontae Adams. I mean, he was just an absolute beast last year. Was the running back position, how much you look at guys, you know, Derrick Henry doesn't catch a lot of passes, but he is basically a UPS truck running downhill at the defense. Why those guys in as the number one at their positions? Yeah, it, be, it was between Adams and Diggs for me, and at some point, you know, it was close, really close, and in fact, they're, they're pretty close together on the list, and in the end, just talking to people and going back and watching some stuff, I decided to go with Devontae Adams. He had a phenomenal season last year, as did Diggs, so it's hard to ping either one of them, uh, but they were very close. Henry is the number one running back uh, after what he did last year, rushing for over 2,000 yards, carrying that team the way he did. Uh, but if Dalvin Cook had played an entire season and he hasn't put one yet together, I think if he stays on the field, he has a legitimate chance to be the number one running back. But they're close. I went with Derrick Henry. And by the way, Derrick Henry was close to being in the top ten. Uh, you know me and running backs. I just couldn't do it. I get it. Um, Aaron Rodgers, there's been off-season stuff. Deshaun Watson, very different off-season stuff. But both have been in the news. Did you consider off-season stuff like that and again they're very different but did you consider that with either player or those types of players or was it just hey if Aaron Rodgers is back in Green Bay or just how good he is type of thing and if Deshaun Watson I'm going to consider that he's going to be able to play that kind of thing what'd you do with guys like that no it, it, that didn't take into account their offseason stuff I, I think Aaron Rodgers will go back to Green Bay I'm a big believer in that I think this is all about a contract and not just the money a structure of the contract that sends a message look no matter what I do because if he goes backward in 2021, then there's going to be an out for them to say, hey, it's Jordan Love time. So give him a new deal. Make him the highest paid quarterback or one of the top two quarterbacks in the league and make him have some stability as the quarterback there no matter what happens in 2021. And, and as far as, you know, some of these other guys, uh, when, you, when you look at where they are and what they're doing, Deshaun Watson's off the field stuff, yeah, it could be impactful. But as of right now, when I rate these guys, I rate him as an NFL player because right now he's the quarterback of the Houston Texans. That could change. He could be suspended. We don't know how it's going to play out. Uh, but for now, he's still a member of the Houston Texans. Well, thank you for doing the list. I know everyone's going to give you a flack because every list, that's what you do. You pick it apart. But when I'm at the pool sometime this weekend and my brother and my kids and my nephew and their friends and we're bantering about this list, thank you for giving us some NFL to talk about uh, in June. Well done, Pete Prisco. You got it. All right. And, uh, you know, Pete, part of our NFL crew, they do an excellent job. Their podcast game is strong. Pick six podcast. It's tremendous. You download. You subscribe. You enjoy. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.